Pipe drive has many benefits, but it also has weaknesses. Then why nobody is talking about them? I am vendor agnostic consultant. It means I do not take any affiliate, and that's why today I can openly share with you five really most useless pipe drive features that annoy a lot of my clients, and I make sure that they are aware of them. So if you expect to use PyTrack for all and all your sales functions, be ready for some bad news. Please watch this video. And if you have any specific questions about PyDrive, its implementation and configuration for your business model, leave them in the comments below. So smart dogs with a long-awaited feature as all CRM users send proposals, quotes, and contracts to their client. We have even seen this huge announcement across many media sites and Bloomberg included about how Pipedrive enters the document management space by releasing smart dogs add-on. Yes, first of all, it's an add-on. Another thing is smart dogs. I don't think so. They're definitely not smart. This is not something that they have developed. This is something that simply uses Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. And all that information from the your deal and from your contact, somehow tries to fit in in those Google Docs. So the first thing is they look ugly. Yes, they do. Because just try to make Google Doc nice. You might achieve something after many long hours of design, but in general, it's just so hard. Another, the most painful thing is products of the pricing table works only with Google Docs and not Google Sheets. And it's really, really bad. Most of my clients that offer services of products, they have many custom fields related to the products. And before they enter Pipedrive, they usually use Google Sheets to send the quote because simply it just looks much better, easier to navigate, especially if there are so many deals around the product or service. But the, the smart dogs, at, as a pipe drive calls them, it is impossible to add products to Google Sheets. That's a huge deal breaker. Third thing is, as they are called smart dogs, users expect something like quote to proposal automation because Pipedrive is just screaming about the document automation. And when you, as a business owner, I said that you can automate documents with Pipedrive, of course you expect that function. But no, it's not happening. It does not integrate with anything else. It is simply standalone one Google Doc where you can add specific details, but you cannot transform it to another proposal. Uh, yeah, when there are so many nice uh, CPQ options in the market, and this option is called Smart Docs, no surprise, there is so confusion and expectations are unfortunately never met. So I do like Pipedrive, but I never recommend for my clients to use smart docs inside Pipedrive. So the idea to manage projects in the same software as you're doing your sales sounds refreshing. And a lot of my clients got so excited when projects got introduced. I wasn't so excited because I knew that it could be 
just another add-on like SmartOx. So I really investigated what are the capabilities of the project management software inside PipeDrive. And simply at this stage, this year, I definitely do not recommend it. First thing that we need to understand is project management. If we are talking about client projects and different types of operations inside the company, is always more complex than sales process. You can agree, you can disagree, but that's what I noticed working with so many different business models. Now, I could name 50 reasons, but there are very basic things that comes to my mind when I'm looking at the projects on Pipedrive. First thing is you don't have different statuses options. Every company project that I have worked on doesn't have just a task status because there's a huge difference between task management and project management, but they also have approval statuses, finance statuses, stakeholder involvement statuses. Sometimes approval needs to come from five different stakeholders and that becomes five different status options alone. Second thing is you only have phases of a project that were simply recycled from stages concept in the CRM. And that really annoys me. This is not a funnel. Project is really a funnel. Third thing is you can track time. You cannot track time like in proper project management software. And this is really annoying if you are a productivity geek, as a lot of uh, operation managers are. You don't have any analytics on your project. That really annoys me because if you're saying you can manage projects on our software, I want to see analytics or KPIs that are actually for project management, not for sales. You don't see any timelines or gun charts to plan several projects ahead. So you're definitely not running just one project. When you are closing your deals, you have several plot projects. What about the time planning and capacity? Six one is cross project tracking. So what if we are working cross projects? What then? Another pain point is a lot of company models require client access capabilities. You don't have that. You cannot invite guests or clients to this project. And the final one is no workload view. Capacity planning is a critical feature. You can't just say you have project management capability on your software when there's no capacity planning. So these are just small things that adds up into just a conclusion that I don't think that anyone should manage projects if they want to manage it properly on Pivotry projects, or at least yet. Maybe they have plans to develop this further and we will see big improvements, but at this stage, it's definitely no-no. Okay, so it's time to talk about Lead Booster. Lead Booster is an add-on, which again is marketed as Lead Booster, <laughs> which I, you might think will increase your leads. And it offers four different functions, live chatbot, web forms, and the so prospect. Now, there are many live chat and chatbots apps in the market with a really wide range of functionalities. What I really want my clients always understand that chatbot on Piatribe is really limited. Unless you are a solopreneur or running a really small business and you don't have any conditional logic around your process, then you might consider it. But in general, I haven't seen a single person who would 
run into problem just because of the limitations of a chatbot. Live chat the same. It just doesn't have the functions that are that you can get from other apps. Web forms the same. It doesn't have conditional logic. It's really limited in terms of branding and all other things that you would expect. And Prospector simply imposes more fees for you. So I would definitely not suggest investing into Leadbuster, having in mind the pricing that is monthly again and looking at other options. So Pipedrive itself integrates with so many chatbots and live chat and web forms that can really optimize the workflow, automate and just help your leads create and just reach you much faster. So the lead booster is another no-no that I never recommend for my clients. Everyone got excited about Sales Assistant AI or Sales Coach AI on Pipedrive. And a lot of my clients ask me, is it going to automate all my deal flow? Is it going to help to sell like market intelligence and similar things? No, no. Uh, for me, unfortunately, that was just a marketing trick that Pipedrive used with the word AI, because what it simply did was ma helps you manage your notifications and notifications are obviously present in all the CRMs uh, because you're supposed to get notifications on your CRM, isn't it? So there's nothing AI crazy that you can get, even though you do expect from the name itself. So what you get is simply several types of notifications, so community notifications, everyone who, you know, is interested in the project product development and uh, uh, insights of other users, product update that you receive again from Pipedrive, email tracking. Yes, you can make sure that you get, receive um, notification when someone opened an email. Activity reminders, which are already obvious when you go to the deal and you see the uh, red arrows across that yeah, they are overdue, updates and what I follow. So if you're a follower of other deals, let's say if you're a manager um, and you're managing sales reps and you, therefore you follow their deals, so you receive notifications about the deals that you follow. Analytics and personalized tips, this is sort of a bit tiny step forward um, about the um, field that I actually not fill and just personalized tips, how you can improve. Again, nothing too futuristic that you would expect. And comments as well as mentions and your assignments that are obvious notifications anyone would expect from CRM. So when somebody gets excited about the sales notification, uh, AI or sales coach AI, I just tell them, please manage your expectations. This is definitely not the AI that you would expect as I don't think it is even AI <laughs> to be honest. So let's talk about revenue forecast. In general, I really like Pipedrive insights as the capabilities, especially from professional plan onwards, because then you can make sure that you receive uh, reports based on your custom fields, or you can simply set up them. So you have uh, quite nice insights function on Pipedrive, but one report type that I am really um, usually worried about if my client get excited about is revenue forecast. Now, this one is very limited because it simply relies on one function, on one model. 
it just simply takes into account the deal value and the percentage of the close rate. So it does not give you any space for revenue forecast modeling. There are many models for revenue forecast that my clients use across industries, especially B2B. And they take other factors, you know, they take the risk factor. There's so many models that we usually work on at Process Natives, but this revenue forecast, it just only gives you very limited options. So that's why this is something that, I don't know, maybe 1% of my clients have used successfully just because they were happy with this model. If you need more complex revenue forecast models, uh, we usually trust third-party analytics software to model those forecasts for you. So what is the conclusion of this? So let's call it negative video. Does it mean I don't recommend pipe drive or I hate pipe drive? Definitely no. Pipe drive is one of the easiest CRMs to actually use and configure. I would simply not recommend to rely on all of its features, add-ons, and upsells. If you need help finding your full tech stack solution and alternative to smart docs, projects, chatbot, revenue forecast for your specific business, you can book me below in the consultation link and make sure to subscribe as I will be covering those options in future videos.